Hey everybody, this is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and today I'm going to talk to you about using menus and buttons uh, within the Visual Novel framework. If you don't have the framework, then this tutorial should still be helpful for you to see how I've set up a system in case you want to make your own. But if you do have the framework, then it will be even easier for you to follow along and um, start customizing and using the menus and buttons that are already set up for you. So here we're in the VN framework, and if you uh, go from the main folder into blueprints, then widgets, then you can find a widget called WD Menu Parent, and this is really the parent of all of the important menus within this system. So it doesn't look like a lot on its face, but that's um, because what's really important is the code inside. Um, which has a system of accepting inputs from um, joysticks and um, ways of tracking which widget I want to receive input. Um, so all of that code is included in here. And the most important thing to note is that I track my own array of what widgets are currently up on screen. And that's here in the event construct. Um, I get the variable of the global BP, my game instance. I set that so I can keep calling it. And it contains that widgets up array, which uh, holds the info of what widgets are currently on screen. So any child of the menu parent is going to add itself to that list as soon as it's created. And then it's going to set a lot of um, variables uh, that it can track and use within the system. Similarly, when uh, the widgets in this system get destroyed, um, here's the event destruct here, it goes ahead and takes care of clearing everything from the screen and then um, clearing itself from that widgets up array so that the global VP knows it's not up there anymore. And just to clarify, the you know Unreal has a lot of good ways automatically built in of knowing what widgets on top and accepting those inputs. The main reason I set up this whole system was just to have even more control over it and because of the joystick controls um, because that was something that I found uh, to have some limits uh, within just the default um, widget modes. So that's basically why I set this system up. So let's look at an, at an example. Uh, for instance, right now, if you uh, were to launch the VN framework, you'll see an example right away. This main menu here is um, a child of the menu parent. So let's look at that. It's right here, WD main menu. If you go into the graph here, we're gonna look at class settings. And you'll see right here that it's a child of the menu parent. And if you were ever making your own widget and wanted to make sure it was in this system, then you would uh, set that here. Another thing to note is that when you're doing a child of the menu parent, there's instead of you don't want to use the normal event uh, construct because that contains important code that the parent needs to run but you can do event custom construct which is already set up which is already available for you to use within the code if you just you just call it right click and, and search for it custom construct so what i do here in the main menu is I um, set a specific button style. Let's, let's look at that basic button. The WD basic button is the widget that I've created to pretty much um, be the standard button within the game. And you can take a look at all that code here. A lot of the other buttons I make that have a different style uh, are children of this button. So as you can see, it also contains a lot of code that handles the inputs and it feeds information back to the menu parent. So um, if you're making your own button widgets, then you want to make sure that they're children of uh, the WD basic button. So one of the things that's really nice about setting up a system like this is it lets you dynamically add buttons through code. So normally, like when you're making a widget, you might would you would just use you know a button and drag it in and set them all up manually um, but I like to be able to control it with code so that for instance uh, if I need to hide um, an option I can do that 
So you'll see like in this um, event custom construct, one of the things I do is I, I pull from the save game list, I see if there are any saved games, and that controls whether the continue button gets created. So let's look at some more examples that are already included in the framework for you. For instance, if you go in, um, I've now started a game so that there's a continue. If you go in, you can save by pressing backsa um, backspace will bring up this menu. And you could go to new save, my custom save, confirm, return. And now when we go back, now the custom save is there in the menu because it's all dynamically um, filling that in. So let's look at where it runs that code, which is here in the save menu in your widgets folder. If we go into the event graph here, um, you can find where I create the save list. I already have a function in here that loops through the save list and finds all of those um, saves that are contained there. But here's the function that you'll probably want to pay the most attention to for when you create your own menus, which is create buttons and text. So this is where it is dynamically adding buttons um, to this panel here that contain a list of the saves. So um, if you see, it takes a lot of arguments that you, you don't have to change all of them very much. The most important thing is the text. You definitely want to have button on uh, text on the button, and that's going to be an important identifier for the button whenever it's clicked. So that's the most important thing. Um, add it to viewport. Uh, that's checked yes by default, so you want to do that. Um, owning widget. You can enter in the specific widget you want it to send commands to, um, but if you leave that blank, it'll just set it to, um, let's see, let's follow where this is set. It will just set it to the widget that's calling the code if you don't enter in a value, so that's optional. Um, you can you enter a vertical separation amount to control how it places the buttons, um, how far apart they are from each other. So back here on the save menu where it's called, you'll see I just have the basic button selected, um, which is what I normally use for um, to, to be the button. And then in this code, it then adds it to the, add, adds it as a child to the save game box. So a lot of this you have to customize a little bit yourself, but this function is available for you to use. So as I mentioned, the text field on the button is really important because of course you want your button to have text on it, but also the text kind of acts as an identifier once it's clicked, um, if you want a specific action to happen once it's clicked. Uh, so for example, if you open up the WD basic button, um, you know, by default on a widget, uh, any button has all of these um, different events set up for you. When you use the parent button, or I'm sorry, when you use the WD basic button, that's included in the system, it has a lot of commands tied to those events um, that'll function with the menu parent. Um, it will unhover other buttons that are in that same list. It'll change the style, which is important for if like you're using a gamepad. Um, you know, this manually changes the style of each button so that you visually see it being hovered. So all of that gets controlled in this WD basic button for you. But finally, um, at the end of when it's, uh, you know, pressed or when a player interacts with it, it sends um, these different events back to the menu parent, uh, which include information uh, such as what was the text in that button that was just pressed. So let's go back to the main menu here and see what that looks like on the main menu code. Here's where the event fires. Oh, and a, the, the player clicked a button. So this fires. And then the only thing I really care about on this menu is what was the text on that button. And so I set up this um, switch on string here uh, that, does, that does fire certain events based on the button that was pressed. 
So all you have to do when you create, you know, your own menu that's a child of the menu parent um, is call this event button pressed or clicked. Um, and pressed will include the gamepad as well. Actually, they, they really function pretty much the same. They're both called from the basic button. So as you've already probably been able to surmise for yourself, it's a very complex system that would take a while for me to explain um, in depth and every detail. Um, but it's there included in the framework for you if you want to um, use it and customize it for your own needs. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, we have a Discord now uh, where I check frequently for, for any questions that are asked. So I hope this was helpful and good luck to all of you on your own projects.